Hi, I'm Nat with Howcast, and I'm going to show you how to use your new iPhone 6S. The iPhone 6S introduces some new features, such as 3D touch and live photos. In this video, we will be going over the basics of your iPhone. Just think of me as your personal tech support, or as a friend who got the phone a week earlier than you. In this video, I'll show you how to do things like save your battery life, download and organize apps, make calls, check voicemails, use the camera, browse the web, navigate with maps, and have Siri search and complete tasks for you. Sure, that may sound like a lot, but in no time, you'll be saying, hey Siri, text Nat, thank you. The iPhone 6S has four buttons, five if you count this little switch. Is a switch a button? First of the buttons is the screen's on-off button. Located on the right side of the phone, near the top, it quite simply turns your phone's screen on and off. On the left are the volume buttons, which can be used to change the volume of all your sounds. The earbuds that come with your iPhone also have volume control buttons on them. Just press the plus sign to make it louder and the minus sign to make it quieter. The most important button is the home button. It will turn your screen on if it's off. If you're in an app, press the home button to return to your home screen and press it twice rapidly to see all the apps that are currently running. Press and hold the home button to open Siri, but we'll talk about that later too. Last is this switch, which turns your ringer on or off. Simple enough, right? You would use this in an important meeting or hopefully in a movie theater. The phone has four microphones, one here for talking on the phone, two on top next to the speaker, and one on the back next to the camera's lens. The iPhone 6S's screen is made from Ion X glass, and it has a 3D touch sensor beneath it. On the back of the iPhone, you'll see the camera, which is protected by a small piece of scratch-resistant sapphire glass. Now, let's start using the iPhone. Most actions on the iPhone are performed not with buttons, but by tapping, swiping, or otherwise poking the screen itself. On your home screens, you can see all of the apps that you have on your iPhone. The iPhone comes with a number of apps already installed. Thousands more can be purchased or downloaded for free from the App Store. An app is a program on your phone designed to perform a specific task or function. For example, the Weather app shows you the weather forecast in your area. And this Howcast Fitness app that I've added to my phone gives me workout videos. Each app is represented by its own little square button on your home screen. Swipe to the left to see more apps. To open an app, simply tap the icon once and tap the home button to return to your home screen. Now, maybe you don't like how your apps are organized on your screen. To move your apps around, tap one of them and hold your finger down for a second. The icons will all start wiggling like they're nervous about being moved. Simply drag the icon to its new position or drag it on top of another icon to create a folder. Quick Actions is a cool new feature that's only available on the iPhone 6S. It's a simple drop-down menu of shortcuts to useful functions within an app. To activate your Quick Actions, just press a little bit harder on the app icon and your Quick Actions menu will appear. To instantly get directions to your home from your current location, press hard on the Maps app and select Directions Home. The phone will map out driving, walking, and public transportation options for you. In order for your phone to know where you live, make sure your home address and other information is in your phone's contacts. Now that you know your way around your new iPhone 6S, let's customize things a bit. In this section, I'll show you how to set up your email and connect to a Wi-Fi network. You should have already set up a passcode when you turned on your iPhone 6S. If you haven't done this, just follow the on-screen prompts to set yours up. You'll also set up a Touch ID. This will allow you to use the Home button as a fingerprint scanner because you live in the future. To set up your email, go to Settings once again and tap Mail. Tap Add Account, choose the email service that you use, and enter your email address and password. To read your email, simply tap the Mail app and scroll through. Some email services like Gmail and Yahoo have their own apps, which are also available in the App Store. When you signed up for a plan with your phone carrier, you chose a data plan, which allows you to connect to the internet via 4G. You can avoid running out of your allotted data by connecting to a Wi-Fi network when at home, at work, or any place with a public Wi-Fi network. Internet use while connected to Wi-Fi does not count against your data limit. To set up a Wi-Fi connection, Open your settings once again, tap the Wi-Fi menu, find your network from the Choose a Network list, and then just enter your Wi-Fi password. Once you have entered the password, your iPhone will remember it and automatically connect to that network anytime you're in range. The iPhone 6S boasts an improved battery life, but it can still run low after a long day of rigorously scrolling your Facebook feed. 
With a few tweaks and good habits, you can make sure your battery doesn't run out before the end of the day. You can turn your Wi-Fi off when not in use, lower your screen brightness, close unnecessary apps, or even go into airplane mode, which will keep your phone on but disconnect it from all networks. To turn Wi-Fi off, swipe up from the bottom of the screen to pull up a quick menu, then tap the Wi-Fi icon. This will stop your phone from wasting energy trying to connect to Wi-Fi networks while you're on the move or in an area with no networks. You can adjust your screen's brightness in the same quick menu. Drag the brightness slider left or right to decrease or increase brightness. The brighter your screen, the more battery life it eats up. Try turning down your screen brightness when you're indoors or secretly texting during a movie. When you leave an app and go back to your home screen, that app keeps running in the background, even if you can't see it. And that takes up battery too. To see all your apps that are currently running, tap the home button twice. You can swipe left and right to look through all the apps, and to close an app, swipe it up. Then there's airplane mode. To turn this on, just swipe up from the bottom of the screen and tap the plane icon. This will turn off your phone's cell service, data, and Wi-Fi, extending your battery life without turning off your phone. Plus, you can keep playing Candy Crush without being interrupted by a fundraising call from your alumni association. If your iPhone gets down to 20% battery, it will prompt you to turn on low power mode. This is a special setting that turns off certain features of the iPhone, such as unnecessary animations and automatic email fetching. To make a phone call, tap the phone icon, dial the number or search for it within your contacts, and then tap this phone icon. You can use other apps while on a call. While you're talking on the phone, press the home button to return to your home screen and navigate from there. You can check your email, play a game, maybe find the love of your life on Tinder. Just be careful not to hang up on anyone. You may not have every phone number memorized, so tap contacts to see a list of numbers stored in your phone. To add a contact, tap the plus symbol. You can of course enter their phone number here, but you can also add a photo, their email address, birthday, and home address. You can even set a unique ringtone that will play when they call you. Also, if you never want to hear from someone again, this is where you can block them from your life forever. For quick access, add contacts to your favorites. Tap the star, then the plus sign, and then select from your contacts. To listen to your voicemail, simply tap the voicemail icon. Gone are the days when you had to listen to every voicemail in a row. The iPhone has visual voicemail, which allows you to see who called and allows you to listen to each message in any order you like, or maybe decide just not to listen at all. For better sound, plug in the earbuds that come with your iPhone 6S. These include a microphone that hangs right by your mouth on the volume controls, so you don't have to shout into your phone. The iPhone automatically adjusts to your speaking volume, so if you're a quiet talker or a loud talker, it should all sound the same to the person on the other end. To video chat, you can either open the FaceTime app or go into your contacts. If your contact has the FaceTime app on their phone, the FaceTime camera icon will be visible. Your iPhone will use the front-facing camera and microphones, so just hold it a foot or two from your face and talk. Once again, earbuds will help with the sound quality, especially if you're outdoors. You've seen the billboards. The iPhone 6S boasts a 12 megapixel camera. I'm going to teach you how to take photos, take selfies, shoot video, and even create what Apple calls live photos. There are a ton of different shooting modes on the iPhone, but today, since this is a beginner's course, we're only going to talk about the basics. Let's open up the camera app. To take a photo, point the camera at your subject, then tap your subject on the screen to focus on them and adjust lighting, then just press the big white button to take the photo. The flash will turn on automatically if needed. To turn it on or off manually, tap the lightning bolt icon in the top left corner of the screen. You can also add a filter by tapping this icon in the bottom right. Filters allow you to add a bit of control to your photo's colors. You can add a filter before or after you've taken a picture. Some filters make colors brighter, others make the photos grayscale or sepia toned. To switch to the front facing camera and take a selfie, tap this icon in the top right of the screen. A little tip, the volume button icons can also be used to take a photo, which is a lot easier when you're holding your phone with one hand. Also, when taking your selfie, keep the camera straight in front of you or a bit above your face to avoid taking a photo of the inside of your nose. To record a video, drag over to video mode and then tap that same button, which will now appear red. Remember, when taking a photo or video, hold your camera steady. The iPhone 6S also has the option to record video in 4K which is twice the quality of HD video. 
You might not notice the difference on your phone's screen, but it'll make a big difference if you view it on your computer. Of course, 4K videos take up much more space on your phone, so if you don't have that much space free on your phone, you might want to stick to the HD format. The iPhone 6S has a new feature called Live Photos. A live photo is basically a short three to four second video that captures when you shoot a photo. Your iPhone records about two seconds before and two seconds after the photo. If you hard press a live photo, you'll see the full motion come to life. It's a lot like a portrait of a wizard in Harry Potter, but real. Live photos are a fun feature, but they take up about twice as much space as a normal picture. They'll be automatically turned on by default. To disable them, you can tap this button. We're going to take a look at the iPhone's built-in web browser, Safari. You can do anything here that you would on your desktop browser. Search the web, do some shopping, see what your ex is up to. Tap the Safari icon to open the web browser. In the navigation bar, type whatever you're looking for, hit go, and Safari will perform a Google search for you. If you find a website that you want to remember forever, tap here to bookmark it for quick access in the future. Tap here to email the web address to someone else who might enjoy it. You can have more than one web page open at a time on your phone using tabs. Each tab contains a separate website layered on top of each other like sheets of paper. Tap here to see your open tabs and tap the plus to open a new one. You can use the Maps app to look up specific addresses, get directions, or search for places nearby. To view traffic on the map, tap the circled eye info button and then tap show traffic. To view public transportation, tap the info button, then tap transit. To find a location, just type in the address and hit search. For step-by-step -step directions, tap the icon of a mode of transportation, then hit start. Hit end at any time to stop the directions. To find directions to a specific location on the map without knowing the exact address, tap the location with your finger and hold it there to drop a pin. Tap the pin, then tap directions. You can also search by category. For example, type gas station or Chinese food to find a gas station, or even better, Chinese food in your area. Or tap the search bar to choose from one of the iPhone's preloaded categories. Tap a pin to see the name of the business. Tap the name for more information. Or just tap hard on the pin to bring up quick actions like directions or call. If you choose directions, hit start, and your iPhone will read you the directions out loud as you drive or walk. In some cases, you'll want to look up directions to your home, especially if you're using the Directions Home Quick Action. Remember, to make this automatic, make sure you have your home address set in your contacts. To send a map to a friend or brag about it on social media, tap the Share button in the upper right corner, and then choose Message, Mail, or whichever method you want to use to share it. A little tip here, to save a map for quick reference to view offline, Take a screenshot. To take a screenshot, press the on-off button and the home button at the same time. The iPhone will save an image of exactly what's on screen. It's also great for taking images of web pages or text conversations, anything you might want to save for later. Have you lost something in your phone? Maybe someone sent you a message, but you can't remember, was it in your email or your iMessages? You can use the iPhone's main search function to search for anything within your phone or also on the web. To activate the iPhone's main search bar, go to your home screen, place your finger in the middle, and swipe down. In this search bar, you can find practically anything on your phone. The search function looks through all of your apps, your texts, your contacts, your email, and your web history. It can also search the web, maps, and the app store. And of course, there's Siri. Think of Siri as a tiny personal assistant trapped in your phone who is eager to help you. You can ask Siri to perform all sorts of tasks, like giving you directions, setting an alarm, making a call, or playing your music. To turn Siri on, go into Settings, tap Siri, and then tap this switch. Now, just hold down the Home button and start talking. Video of baby goat jumping. Here are some videos of baby goats jumping I found on the web. Thank you, Siri. For added convenience, turn on and configure Hey Siri. This is a feature that allows you to talk to Siri without even touching your phone. It's particularly convenient if you're driving. Hey Siri, give me directions to 30 Rockefeller Plaza. Time for my unannounced Saturday Night Live audition. I've shown you how to navigate your iPhone 6S and set up your apps, use email and Wi-Fi, save battery life, make calls and store contacts, shoot photos and video, browse the web, use maps and get directions, 
and use iPhone's search function and its personal assistant, Siri. For now, you're ready to go out into the world with your iPhone 6S at your side. Thanks for watching this video. I'm Nat Towson with Howcast. Click below to subscribe and make sure to check back every week for a new tech tutorial.